All right, guys, next one is the Y to Y. So we're going to feed the primary here. So we got our three amp breaker again. We're gonna feed H1 with line one. We're gonna feed H1 of the second transformer from line two. And we're gonna feed H1 of the third transformer with line three. We're creating a Y connection there. So on the, uh, on the primary, we're going to jumper our H2s together. Okay, so we're gonna have a common connection between all of those transformers there. So I'm bringing three phase in. Uh, I'm not needing a primary uh, neutral, right? The neutral is not connected on this one. Okay, so three phase in, but I have jumpered my H2s uh, together there. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, what's it looking for? It's looking for the higher voltage for this lab. Higher voltage we know is the series connection. So we're doing series connection of X2 and X3. And as we've mentioned numerous times, this has nothing to do with delta or Y. This is just providing the higher voltage that's available between those two windings. Beautiful, okay? So I've got a primary here. I've uh, paralleled my, no, have I paralleled? No, I seriesed up my secondaries there to get the higher voltage output. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, feed my output here from the secondary winding. So I've got uh, my, my line one is coming from X1 of the first transformer. My line two on the secondary is gonna come from X1 of the second transformer. And my line three is gonna come from the X1 of the third transformer. Okay, you'll notice that I have uh, all my X4s that are open right now. So I'm going to jumper all my X4s together so they have the exact same potential. So I'm creating that star point on the Y. And then I'm gonna bring that out as my reference to the neutral there. Beautiful. Okay, so I have line one, line two, line three, and my neutral. And we saw earlier that we didn't need to uh, ground that neutral. We'll see, we'll do that test again on this guy. Um, but let's see what voltages we're, we're having out. So we have two eight volts available on the breaker here, right? So if we go between uh, A to B, we're going to have 211, right? It's been consistently 211 all the way through. Okay, that looks good. Okay, if I go from B to C, I got 211. And if I go from, sorry, that was A to C, and if I go from B to C, I have the identical voltage. So. 210, 211 volts coming in, right? On their diagram that we had before, we were expecting 28, a little bit higher today. Um, so what do we have between uh, H1 and H2 on the primary side? Every other time that we looked at this voltage, it was identical to the line voltage there. But we're looking at the phase voltage here on each of the primary windings now. So here we have 127 volts. So we're gonna think of that as 128 volts. Sorry, 120 volts, sorry. Uh, two eight volts coming in, 120 volts available on the phase there. So why is that? That's because we've created a Y connection on the primary. So our line voltage is two eight, our phase voltage is 120. If I look at the line to neutral voltage or the phase voltage on the second transformer, it's gonna be identical. 125 volts, beautiful. And on the third transformer, it should be identical as well. Phase voltage should be root three less than the line voltage. Excellent, okay, so may have bent your mind a little bit, but we have line voltage here, we have phase voltage here on these connections. That's because we created this star point here where all of our H2s are connected together. Okay, now the ratio of this transformer is root three to one. Nothing to do with three phase or anything, it's just the fact that these windings, compared to these windings, if we put two eight here, we got 120 volts here. But we no longer have two eight here, we have 120 volts here. And root three of 120 is 69 volts on each of these guys. So let's take a look at the voltage between uh, X1 and X2 on the secondary of this transformer. So the ratio from primary to secondary 
is exactly the same. It's the same amount of windings, right? But because we've created this Y connection here, there's less voltage being applied to that phase of the primer. And that's really where the, the voltage is transferring. It's not transferring on the line values, it's transferring on the phase values. So root three less of one, or root three of 120 is 69 volts. I'm seeing 75 here. And again, we're consistently seeing higher voltages on the secondary because I do not have a load on the secondary. So 75 volts there, and I'm gonna have identical voltages on each of these guys. Okay, 76. And if I go right down the lines here, every winding here is gonna have identical voltage. All the way through. So the reason why this voltage is so low is because the primary voltage was reduced because of the Y connection. Okay, just to make a point, we'll check every winding here. And the final one should have the identical voltage. Beautiful. Okay, so if we have uh, 76 volts, we should see root three higher than that from our line to line voltages, right? So let's take a look at the voltage now on these terminals right here, right? Because we brought them out to these guys. So if we look at our line to line voltage here, it should be root three higher than the voltage we saw on the phase. So we got 252 volts on the line voltage there. So why do we have that higher voltage there from line to line? Well, essentially we had, on paper, we had 138 volts line to neutral, right? So if we add up the two voltages from here to here on the external part of the, uh, of the windings, then root three higher should have been 240 volts line to line. And again, we're seeing a little bit higher voltages than everything that we put on paper. Okay, let's take a look at the voltage between uh, B and C. Should be identical there. So 252 volts. And between A and C, we should see an identical voltage. Beautiful. So identical voltages all the way through. We're expecting 240, we're saying 250 for the same reasons we said before. Higher voltage on the input and no loading on the secondary there. Okay, and the reason why it's 253 is because the line to neutral voltage or the phase voltage is 140, 150 volts. So if we take the 150, if we take that value, 151.5, and we root three that value, so 151.5 times root three, we're going to get 253 volts. Okay, that voltage from line to neutral that we're seeing right here, the 151 and a half, is identical to the voltage that we're seeing on the outside of this secondary winding. So X1 to X4 will be identical. X1 to X4 on this guy will be identical as well. That's our phase voltage. Beautiful. And finally, X1 to X4 on this guy should be exactly the same. Beautiful. So again, it's been frustrating all the way through in that um, because there's no loading on the secondary and because our voltage is a little bit higher than 2A today, then all the voltages have been a little bit higher than what we expected uh, on paper. But hopefully you're seeing here for this Y to Y connection, walk through the voltages one more time, is that we have essentially 2.8 going into this circuit. That's our line voltage. Root 3 less of that is available on the phase on our primary. So there's root 3 less. That means that there's, root, there's only 120 volts here. Root 3 less is going to give us 69 volts on each of those guys. So each of these Windings on the secondary 
now has root 3 less than 120. We connected them up in a series configuration. So those two voltages add together. That voltage is available between our line and our neutral connection. That's our phase voltage. And because we've created a Y connection on the secondary, then our line to line voltage is root three higher of the voltage we just saw from line to neutral there. So in this case, on paper, we've got 28 line to line in and 240 volts line to line out, three phase. In this case, we got 210, like in reality, we have 210, three phase in, and we got 252, 253 volts, three phase out. All right, guys, hopefully everything's made sense on the three phase distribution transformers. Uh, next thing you're gonna do in the playlist and in the shop is you're gonna move over to the other trainers. So you're gonna close everything up here. You've done as much as you can uh, on these guys. Now, I only had you guys do, like in the shop class, they only had to do um, like a low or a high voltage for each of the different configurations. Um, in the playlist, you're seeing all the, the different configurations of low or high connections. You're more than welcome to sit and spend some more time on this station and do those extra connections that were not asked of you in the shop menu. Or you can come back to this later on as a review in uh, you know week nine or something and do the other connections that you didn't do in the shop. So once you guys are finished on these units, then you're gonna go to the other side of the shop. These are all distribution transformers where there's uh, no common connection between the primary and the secondary. And at the back of the shop, easy now, so smooth. Uh, at the back of the shop, we're gonna be working on the otter transformer stations. So let me just take the video over there. It's the next video in the playlist. So on the bottom here, we have, um, we have a number of auto transformers on the base here, and we're gonna be walking through these connections for your next transformer projects. All right guys, we'll see you on the next video.